Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we are going to jump into some numbers right away here and show you what's going on. We have, as far as listings go, 17,745 are active today with 4,461 that came on the market the past seven days, but only 2,675 under contract and you can see here that's that red line and look folks it's still going down i believe the 2645 is a new record low but the difference between number of homes going under contract and active listings is continuing to grow and so that's having an impact no doubt and so we're going to take a look at what some of the impact is on that and uh, crunch some numbers here for you it's very apparent it glaringly apparent that the number of new listings coming on um, is not that not that big and the rate of change is slowing it is the number of new listings coming on is kind of slowing um, we should be at about eighteen thousand today when we look at uh, you know the past few weeks but we haven't it's like we've I, I've often wondered if there's going to be this listing ceiling out there right? call me nuts but we're going to reach a point and it's just going to kind of hover for a while and uh, sales are going to be going to be slow. We're going to be in the doldrums for a while, which is OK. But having said that, uh, I set an appointment for yesterday morning for a listing. It was an over 55 community in the East Valley, and uh, it was just listed the day before. And lo and behold, it went under contract. So now it was in the uh, um, like 375, 380 range, you know, two bedroom, but it Boom, gone. So um, that's not the norm, but that's what happened to me. <laughs> but shoot, there was a nice house there and it's gone. But here's, now I'm not going to read you this whole thing here. I'm going to kind of give you a recap. But it's saying that there were 5,519 resales during July. That means they're not new construction. This is down 37% from 9,404 in July of last year. So the number of sales are down about 25%. The median sales price, and this is what you're here for, right? For resales was 464,000 in July, down from 484,000 in June. And the lowest median sales price since February 22, but it's still up 15% year over year. So we're coming down, but we're still up year over year, but that can be erased quickly. And resales tend to react more quickly to changing market conditions because of the time between contract and signing. So they're saying that resales react faster than new construction because those are taking time. The resale numbers are worse than anticipated with a huge drop in closed volumes and a large fall in the median price of $20,000. Over 4% in just one month. Remember, there was a time we were going up at 3% a month. Well, now we just went down 4% in one month. The new home numbers are better than expected with new high being reached in the median sales price and only a small drop in units closed. So for now, new construction's kind of holding their own, but I think their data is lagging. Uh, BG says, just moved into my new home, feel more nervous about the weather. It was good to buy now because of all the slowdown. Loving the area and home so far. Welcome, welcome, and uh, good morning, Brad. Um, the slowdown certainly isn't um, seasonal. It's not weather-related. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Here is... What we're seeing here, if you want to look at a chart that shows you where prices per square foot are going, uh, definitely on the downward slope as we have this strike on buyers. And how bad is it? This one, I think this tells the story for everything. Um, this is sales month to date. Now, this is only current as of July 28th. But take a look at that. This is this is every July since 2008. So we're sitting here at 5,136. Let me get you a little magnifying glass here. You can see it better. See if I can get that bugger to work. Well, why is it not working this morning? Because I'm live. That's why. 5,136. When was the last time we were at 5,100? Um, got down to 5,400 in June of or July of 2014, but we have to go way back to July of 2008 to, to see activity as low as what we're seeing today. That's what's driving the active listing number higher and higher every week, except for this week, we're just uh, kind of hanging in there. So the uh, 
Oh, now my get this. I'm going to show you this here. This uh, this just had that. Now that I'm not showing you my uh, my magnifying glass is working. <laughs> I'm going to turn it off now. So um, anyway, so that's I, that threw me out there a minute. I'm still surprised that some people think they can list as high, especially in the Maryville area with no upgrades. You know, people are still pricing high. Uh, it's amazing to watch. It's we're looking at um, over. 5,400 price reductions um, over a seven day period. So, but I think the majority of those price reductions are flippers that, you know, they've got hard money loan. They're, they're trying to get out. So those I'm seeing those faster than, uh, than resale, but there is a pretty good mix in there and people are still, you know, when you get to this pricing level, psychology tells you, Oh, my house is worth this. And that's the way it was in March. And now you've had that number in your head this whole time. And you go, well, I hear real estate's going down, so I better list, list for this. And uh, and then you find out that you're not going to get it. It's really hard to let go of that price that you believe you once held. Because you've been, you've been looking at that equity and going, this is my cash cow. This is going to help me in retirement. I'm going to be able to move in the next house. It's really hard to let that go. Uh, but folks... Um, let it go because the numbers are numbers are telling as the slowdown occurring in the 55. Yes, um, it is occurring in the 55 communities. I was down in Sun Lakes yesterday and we're seeing the same thing. In fact, I'll look up some numbers here while I while I'm on here. This is another chart that shows new listings by month. And again, we'll go here to July. And why not try the magnifying glass one more time? There we go. In July. We're seeing that there is, uh, that may be too big. Here we are. It's the green line. 10,038 homes came on the market in July as new listings compared to 2021 where we had 10,587. Now, that's not a big difference, but it shows you that when you see the headlines that say that inventory is growing, the natural assumption is, is that everybody's listing their homes and everybody's trying to get out. And I hope you're seeing, if you're a regular viewer of the show watching, that um, that's not the case. It's just not the case. Um, the um, it's I'm trying to look up some numbers here while I'm talking to you. Um, it's just the fact that they aren't falling off. They're they're you're seeing that for sale sign go up in your neighborhood and it's staying there, and then another for sale sign shows up where before that for sale sign would show up. And then lo and behold, um, it was gone. And here's the listings in the over 55 that picked three areas. Um, so, um, and you've got 458 current listings here and you go back to last year, you had 178. So they're having the same issue with this. See that gap between the red line and the blue line. If I just compare it to, just this last year, I'll select everything except uh, 2020, 2019, and 2018. And just come on, 19, you can go away. We don't need you, 18. There we go. Here we are. So you can see what's happening. And this chart matches every city in the valley. And it also matches what I showed you the other day on, on open door. In other words, they had listings coming on and they were selling. And all of a sudden now the, the sales dropped down and the listings went way up and uh so smack smack here says people aren't listing buyers aren't buying that is correct it's just slow out there it's dead in a doornail uh you talk to real estate agents they have an open house gee i only had one person uh what happens with all the hedge funds and cash investors um they're still out there um they're not out there in droves but uh you know my phone i gotta be honest with you it's still ringing off the hook um you know gee rick can you uh can you get find me a house? Um, and I'm going to pull up Mesa here while we got got a question here. Smack wants me to take a look at Mesa. I guarantee it's going to look just like Sun City, Sun Lakes. But I'm going to pull it up and get rid of these other two cities and see what we're looking at here, folks. 1420. See, it's almost a mirror image. So every city I pull up is going to look like this. The number of listings that have come up. I mean, comparatively, 565 last year. Now you have over 1,400. That's why the bidding wars are, wars are gone. And what's it going to take for this to change? Well, you know, rates started out at 5.13 this week. Surprisingly, we're going down 
Um, now they're about 5.30, oh, I believe what I saw, 3,000 month payment for cookie cutters beyond ridiculous. That's why everybody's sitting on their hands. Nobody, this is a natural occurrence is when a market tries to balance itself. This is, believe it or not, normal market adjustments where once you reach that peak of affordability, things go haywire and people just say, I'm out, I'm sitting back. You reach this period prior to that where people just go nuts and feel like they can never get in. They better get in now. And so they overbid. They waive appraisals. They waive inspections. They get in. Oh, thank goodness I'm in. And then all those people behind you now can't afford anything. So they sit on their hands like we're seeing now. Lo and behold, the market slows down. But the catalyst was the jump in interest rates. Now, 5% is not a high rate. I get it. Get that all the time in the comment section. I don't get it. 5% is not a high rate. Well, it is if you couple it with the fact that home prices escalated at over 20% a year, two years in a row almost three years in a row. So you had this rapid escalation of home prices because it was being fed by easy money. In fact, I remember the Treasury Secretary even encouraging the administration saying, borrow as much as you can because it's free right now. None of that made sense to me. <laughs> it may be free right now, but the rates are adjust <clears throat> and we're going to catch up. Um, if we go into recession, does that mean Fed's lower rates? That's the question that everybody's asking. So it depends on how deep the recession is. And I know the numbers that they're going to be looking at when you're looking at total inflation. Here's the thing that really gets me is we all know, and we all feel right now that inflation is driven by high food costs and high fuel costs. And they say that they don't include those in the inflation numbers, but they do in some of the measurements. But the, the Fed can't, central bank raising interest rates is not going to make me less hungry. So we're still going to have demand for food and there's still a shortage. And it's not going to affect the price of gas. So they can raise interest rates to 19% tomorrow if they want to. And my gas is still going to be $4.50 a gallon. And my food is going to be high, especially bacon. And so I don't see that coming down. They raise rates to lower consumption and to lower economic activity. That's the only way to get inflation down. Inflation is too much money chasing too few goods. So let's get rid of the too much money part. And then there won't be as much consuming going down. And the rate of inflation will tamp down. Well, it will tamp down with gas only as gas gets high. As gas gets high, people just cancel their vacations. They stop driving and, uh, and then you just pull back. Uh, but food, nothing we can do about that. People start going to the food bank more and more. But it's, uh, it's something that what's going to be interesting to watch is at what point will they say, okay, we've squeezed this enough. Let's lower the rates. I think that's going to be a while because the Fed would be in really tough shape. The country would be in tough shape. Let's say if tomorrow uh, they announce that we're going back down to below four on the rates, this real estate activity will ramp right back up and we'll be right back where we started from. And the rest of the economy is going to be doing the same thing. And I'm uh, thinking Phoenix total units sold are 30 less this year. It's looking like that. It's around that 25 to 30% range. Absolutely. I agree with you. Uh, what's going to happen? All these open door properties and sitting on the market for 100 days. They take old ball, old ball offers. Yes, let's talk. Here's what's going on with open door, folks. Remember, they got fined $62 million for what they called bad uh, practices, or you know, they were they were blowing you some windies of what they were doing. Um, so at some point, uh, pent up demand will spring prices back up. They will, but I don't know when. Um, Open door right now, and here's what I'm seeing as an agent. When I go in and look at an open door home, they're offering bonuses for real estate agents. They're offering bonuses if I bring them a buyer, and they're offering you, the buyer, $1,000 in closing cost credits if you close before September 30th. Now, my little skeptical mind says, huh, Looks to me like they're having a quarter three fire sale and they're going to shut the doors on quarter four. I mean, $3,500 a house that they're giving the real estate agent. Now, for me, I'll tell you, here's what I'd do with that. If you want to go and write a lower offer on an open door home, hit me up. Because what I'll do, I'll take that $3,500 bonus credit that they're giving out and I'll credit it back to you. Add that to that $1,000 that they got. Now you got $4,500 in closing cost credits. 
which will actually pay for all your closing costs and purchasing a home. So if you're interested, hit me up. I think it's a good play. But I don't know when we go through and we look at these listings and we see that, you know, we don't really steer people towards it. I mean, I'll show you the listing if it matches what you want. But I think right now, if you're looking for a home to buy and you would like to get it below list, open doors, your best play. I really think it is. So it's going to be interesting to see. Household credit cards, high debt highest over 20 years. It's interesting. I looked up a number on the Federal Reserve and didn't see that. But uh, you may have a source that I'm not seeing, but I'm going to look it up again. And uh, more concerned about high home prices and rates. You can always buy down the rate. You can't always buy down the rate because the rate's not always down. I mean, you can buy it down, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, it, it. I do like the the trend that's out there now where we're telling sellers, why don't you contribute to help buy down somebody's rate? And, uh, but you know, look, if you're hanging onto a house, and you're going to be there more than 10 years and uh, you're paying down that note, the, the price of the home between where we're at now, where it's probably going to land is not going to be that much to affect you over 10 years. I remember uh, um, a listing I had, actually it was a sale I had with a couple and we were in the house and I think we were paying 250 for it. And, and we had got them down from 275, I think down to 250. And we got them to agree to kick in $14,000 for, I don't know, the roof or something. It was a while back and we're in there and uh, the wife says, can we get them down another $5,000? And I said, <laughs> we're getting them to kick in 14 grand. We're getting them to, uh, we got them 275 to 250. I mean, I'll ask if you want to come down another five, you just tell me and I'll, I'll go back to them. But I uh, mentally, I think we've we've pretty much worn them out. But let me ask you this. If two years from now, the value of this house goes down 10 percent, how much is that five thousand dollars going to matter? And they said, well, nothing, because we're going to be underwater. And I go, exactly. Now, if in two years we go up 20 percent, how much of a difference is that five grand going to matter? Nothing. What happened was in four years their house tripled. So that 5,000 never came into play. <laughs> so, you know, it's not to say that houses are going to triple again and we're going to have this tremendous ride going forward and that things are going to be all unicorn and rainbows again. I really can't wrap my head around where real estate's going to be in five years. I just can't because I have no historical data to look at that goes back and says, what happened after housing exploded because of really low artificial rates. And when the bank raised the rates, how far down did housing go and when did it kick back up again? Will we ever see under 4% again? I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever really see that. And I think that's the unknown. Um, there's no incentive right now for the central bank to go back to lower rates. It's looking to me like 5% is going to hang in there and it's going to be normal for quite a while. We may muddle along this way. We may, uh, may get up to 5.75 quickly, you know, before the end of the summer and then hover. We'll talk to Pat about that a little bit more tomorrow when we look at the charts. But um, that's, I think, just the way it's going to be. And you're going to see these declines that we see in the numbers that I just show you continue. But I still think we're going to have a listing ceiling and that's going to be another number to watch. And that's just a sign of some malaise out there like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to rent. And we're seeing building permits for multifamily housing increase exponentially, which means rent in that category will come down. Rent in single family homes is coming down statistically on paper, but you probably don't feel it yet. So that's going to be a while. So stay tuned here. We'll keep looking at the numbers. Thanks for watching. Everybody take on the day. Have a great rest of the week.